All right, let us move on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, according to the Sharp Football Analysis, have the toughest schedule in 2024. Noel, um, they've had a decent off-season, you'd have to say, or a very intriguing one, looking at the two quarterback acquisitions in Russell Wilson and Justin Fields coming in from Chicago, obviously. Um, also, Arthur Smith, who never had a quarterback, really, in Atlanta and now has two of them at his disposal. Um that could be quite exciting to watch. You know, the, the Steelers managed to hang in games and win games in the most unlikely ways. Uh, at one stage, I think we we saw them win a game. I think it might have actually been about against the Browns. No, it wasn't. It was against the Ravens, where they would negative yardage on offense in the fourth quarter, but their defense bailed them out. That was a recurring team last year. They can get anything going on the other side of the ball. They could be very dangerous. Well, that's it. And I think look, they've been missing the quarterback for a while. It, it, you know, since Ben kind of got older and, and had to retire, things just haven't really been right for them there. Now, look, we know for whatever reason, they just win anyway. They they always have a, a winning record. That's just the way the Steelers are. There's just something about them that, you know, even coming toward the end of a season when it looks like, oh, maybe this year they're not going to do it. They just pull out those wins when you don't really see them coming. But it's, it's interesting at quarterback now. Obviously, we have Russell Wilson there, followed by Justin Fields. They got those both of those players for, for literally nothing. So from a Steelers point of view, it's it's absolutely a gamble worth taking. If one does, doesn't does hit, maybe the other one does. You have, like, obviously the experience in Russell Wilson. You have that more younger upside in it, Justin Fields. Uh, and it's just it's, it's going to be interesting to see how things kind of pan out. Now, I think the way it looks at the moment, and by all accounts from what I've heard, Russell Wilson has looked good so far in, in mini camps and stuff like that. Justin Fields, maybe it hasn't quite clicked for him. But again, we're not even into training camp yet. So that's something obviously we'll we'll watch for going forward. But I do think they're probably looking at Wilson being that starting quarterback this year. Maybe they're looking at that experience. But I wouldn't count out Justin Fields in terms of, I think, similar to maybe a Taysom Hill in, in New Orleans, you probably will see Justin Fields brought in for specific plays and, and different packages. Not returning kicks now. I know there was a bit of talk about that, but I uh, I don't see that coming to pass. But yeah, it's I, it's going to be interesting to see how these two two quarterbacks at opposite ends of the careers kind of battle it out and, and what way the Steelers use that to their advantage. Because both players, if they are right, can be exciting players. And obviously, you know, when you have players like George Pickens there and Vermouth, who are very good receivers, you know, it's 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 a good chance for these quarterbacks for Russell Wilson to get his career back on track or for Justin Fields to finally get his career going and say, look, I'm not the quarterback that you saw in Chicago because in Chicago, they just didn't give me the right tools and the right situation to do it. Steelers is an organization where you really feel you feel like this is an organization that does it right. That is more structured would be better for a young quarterback like Justin Fields coming into. So it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how that plays out and which one of them actually become that quarterback going forward. Brian, the Arthur Smith OC move is is an intriguing one as well. And I see he's brought a, a Cordaro Patterson with him as well. Um, yeah. And now I know he'll play primarily on special teams. Um, and, you know, they, they've got a, a lot of quirky little pieces around uh, the, the quarterback there, assuming that Russell Wilson does does play. I mean, he's going to start, obviously, but whether or not he plays the whole season, we shall see. Um, the thing with Arthur Smith has been he's kind of the tinker man, and you never quite know what you're going to get from one week to the next, which sometimes can infuriate receivers in particular. And George Pickens doesn't seem to me like the guy who's going to be happy to be left out in the cold while Smith tinkers. Absolutely, and if you look at his... his previous past when he has been offensive corner he tends to run a very run orientated offense and that kind of strikes me as you know somebody who's recognized and acknowledged that they've got two really strong running backs here i suppose they came to the fore towards the back end of the season when they had to win games you think it's a tough environment in which they had to win the baltimore at the back end of the season and they ran they ran it down the throat of the baltimore Ravens and, and won that game you got Najee harris you got warren two really strong r- running backs you're talking about games I know we were talking about off-camera games in which we select the teams to win, the Steelers go and win. I think of the game in Seattle where they, again, got the running game going. And I, th- I could see Arthur Smith kind of focusing predominantly on a run game, orientating offense. And where does that leave? Where does that leave the players and wide receivers who we saw last year can get very disgruntled very quickly. There was different games where, where certain wide receivers were getting the ball more than others and the other one was frustrated. And then the following game, it's a similar path, except it's, it's a different wide receiver. And the quarterback's conundrum for me is, is a bit messy. I know people are saying, oh, yeah, it makes sense. You bring in a, another quarterback to kind of challenge Russell Wilson. But it also kind of strikes me as a team that come week three, if things aren't going their way, 
immediately the fans are going to be saying we want Justin Fields in. And then if Justin Fields comes in and he doesn't really materialise and play well, are we going to see them revert back to Russell Wilson? I feel like they should have... I'm not necessarily saying they shouldn't make the trade because, like, in fairness, in the end, I think most teams in the league probably recognise Justin Fields was worthy of a six-round pick. I think the Bears miss miss kind of calculate what they felt was the, the reward that was going to come with him. I think other team potentially should have been in the sweepstakes, but I get why they did it, but I feel it's going to make for more of a bigger story come the season if Russell Wilson doesn't kick off the season in a, in the manner in which they hope and he's struggling, and then we see Justin Fields come in, and that doesn't necessarily mean he's the long-term solution either. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin deal with that type of situation. Shane, we talk about um, culture, and sometimes it's kind of hard to define which teams have better cultures and which don't, and, and, and to put your finger on the reasons why that might be. But when you look at the Steelers in comparison to, say, the Dolphins or in comparison to, say, the, the, the Chargers or a couple of other teams last year that either looked like they quit on their coaches or where that, you know, you just weren't getting the full package from week to week. For all that, you know, we marveled at times at the Steelers' ability to pull wins out in unlikely scenarios. It's what they do. They hang in there. They've had a win, this, this proud winning record every season under Mike Tomlin precisely because of the way that that, that they are as an organization they they don't they don't lose games that they should win and they often win games that they should lose and i think that cultural aspect is what made this uh the move to get both russell wilson and and justin fields so surprising because the pittsburgh steelers as you know, as we know, a, a team that's only had three head coaches since sometime in the 1960s. This is a, a, an organization which is generally, you know, keeper between the ditches and sure will be grand. And sure enough, it's, they, they've won six Super Bowls over the course of their history. They've consistently been one of the top teams. As much as they have the toughest schedule this year, I don't think anybody, any team really relishes the prospect of, of, of facing them. Even if last year they had one of the more or at least creative offenses, uh, going into most games and so you have to kind of admire the departure in that, in that when they come into how they dealt with the quarterback situation because getting in Russell Wilson and Justin Fields is effectively a shot to nothing how much is it really costing them to go for a player who is a Super Bowl winner and a backup who I think is is was you know regarded by one fan base as being good enough to not only be a starter but be a starter who is better than this year's number one overall pick so that's a decent uh, situation to come in, but the problem is now is away from keeper steady. You know, will the the original option which would have been to try and stick with Kenny Pickett, get some more run players in, use Alex Smith to develop the run game. That would have been the culturally Steelers way to approach it. They've gone for these two new guys, and I have to say, as a media man. This is fantastic. This is, it's setting up here that it's one of two things is going to happen. It's going to work out fantastic for the Steelers, or it's going to be a soap opera every week. And I'm going to have a poll up in the, the Irish Indo. Is it going to be Wilson? Is it is it going to be Fields every week? And I'm sure every week people will have a different opinion. Even here sitting in a podcast, I could almost imagine the, the, the quarterback debate. And in Pittsburgh and in across Steelers me, media, the quarterback debate over the next over the first six weeks of the season is going to change week on week because Russell Wilson, you know, and I've, I've said it before on this podcast that I think there's a lot of people who are um, expecting some sort of Russell Wilson fall off the cliff. I said it before that, that my original thought was that Russell Wilson, I think, will have a good start and then will drop off later into the season. You asked me a week later, I have a different opinion on that. You asked me now, I'll probably change my mind on that again. And I'll change my mind on that again before we actually get in there. We just don't know what to expect from this. So this is probably the most, uh, I guess, unpredictable uh, season that we've seen from the Steelers recently because they haven't done the boring thing. But yet, you know, it's not just about, about the quarterbacks. It's about the entire organization and what they have on the field. And they have a lot of really good pieces. I think Arthur Smith is a head coach who in Atlanta was, I think, could be accused of having a severely lacking in imagination, particularly I saw in the game in Wembley where the, the Falcons were had no imagination in what they were doing. Fair enough, they didn't have a top quality quarterback to work with. But even in the run game, Alex Smith is supposed to be a run game man. I didn't see much of it. I'm expecting better from the Cedars this year. In terms of what Brian was saying about keeping the the wide receivers happy, a wide receiver crew, which again, if I lean back into that soap proper element, have the potential to make things very dramatic and to have that that dressing room fall apart and what. And eventually, potentially lead to Mike Tomlin deciding, you know what, I've had enough of this. Again, I'm probably stepping forward too far here. But that is all in the potential scripts of the Steelers this year. 
But what Arthur Smith needs to do now is is, is to before the, the season starts have an identity as to what the Pittsburgh Steelers offense are going to do and say, this is what our plan is. This is what we're doing. He needs to put his foot down and say, look, it's R Russell Wilson as a starter. We run here. We pass here. This is our identity. That was one thing that was missing from Matt Canada's offense last season. It's one thing that I think Russell Wilson hasn't really had or didn't really have uh, during his time in Denver. And if the, if the Steelers are going to be successful on the offensive side of the ball, and look, the defense, I think, is pretty good. It's the reason why we're not talking about them, because that is the boring Steelers steady on side of the ball, where I think they have some pretty good pieces. They, they brought in, uh, what's the name, is it Patrick Queen, is it from, from the yeah. Ravens, who I think is, is, yeah. a, is, a, is a really good um, improvement in that area. The Steelers' defense has been one of the reasons why they got that 10-7 and 7 record last year. That is particularly strong, and they will build on that. You know, all eyes are on the offense. Is it going to be a soap opera or are they going to get their act together? Because I think what they have done overall, the Steelers, is a gamble worth taking because it's not costing them too much. The, the problem is, though, is if it goes wrong early in the season, the pressure and the whinging and the expectations that people are looking at it and the Microsoft microscope they are under. Outside of the Cowboys, there are a few teams who are under as much of a microscope uh, media-wise, in terms of how people look at them, the, the standards their own fans have, as much as the Steelers, we haven't heard about them much from, you know, in Ireland or outside of. Because generally speaking, they've pretty much stuck with the plan. The plan has gone out the window now. They got they have two half decent options at quarterback. They're going with option A. Option B could be thrown in at any point. It's going to be really intriguing to see what's going on here. And I think they have a good chance of of making the playoffs. I don't think they're going to win the division, but you know, they have the talent to do it. And it's up to Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin to put some to put the rules down early and to have people working on the same page. That's one thing that was missing from them last year is that they had lacked imagination and they were infighting. And even what was it after one of the wins when one of the players turned around and Matt Cannon was like, hey, well done, guys, well done, guys, we got a great win. And the players were like, well, it was, literally turned around and was like, well, it wasn't because of you, buddy. That kind of descent has to be shut down upon, and that it comes from confidence in your own plan. One thing that was missing from last season, something that has to be shown this season. Right, we will see whether Russell Wilson um, has become a better listener over the off season. We had some interesting stories at our live show with Peter King about the relationship between him and Sean Payton. Um, him and Mike Tomlin could be a very uh, interesting side plot to watch during the season ahead in the AFC North. Well, it says everything about the.